Hello, this is a third part in a series on the life of Elijah. In the second part, we saw the Lord sent famine to grab the attention of his people. In this, we are going to look at the encounter on Mount Carmel. This is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18. We'll be focusing on Elijah's prayer. The Lord asked Elijah to present himself to Ahab and when he met Ahab, he asked Ahab to gather all the prophets of uh, Baal and meet him on Mount Carmel. At Mount Carmel, he was greatly outnumbered. Elijah was alone and on the other side, king and the 450 uh, prophets of uh, Baal and the people. But always one person with the Lord is a formidable team. And, the, and Elijah asked prophets of Baal to cut a bull and set it on a wood and he will do the same. And they will pray to their God Baal and Elijah will pray to the Lord of Israel and whoever answers by fire will prove to be the living God. Prophets of Baal went first. They cut themselves, danced and screamed and shouted till the evening there was no answer. At the time of evening sacrifice, Elijah took over and he prayed a short prayer. I'm going to read from chapter 18, verse 36 and 37. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. When he finished praying, as if the Lord was waiting for him to finish, the Lord sent fire from heaven and it burnt the sacrifice wood, stones, soil, and it licked up the water. What a powerful expression of the Lord. Just want to pick up two things from there. One, Elijah appealed to the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He appealed to the God of the forefathers. He said, Lord, my forefathers trusted in you and I trust in you. You are the God of Abraham. He was, uh, the Lord was faithful in Abraham's life. He was faithful in his son Isaac's life and he was faithful in his grandson Jacob's life. He is a God of generations. The generations, each generation experience God's faithfulness and providence and forgiveness. To that Elijah appealed. The God of Israel is a God of generation. My forefathers experienced God and I experienced God's faithfulness. And I have the confidence when my children go through the difficulty, the Lord will come through. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And the second thing I want to pick up from Elijah's prayer is, the Lord pursues his people when they turn back from God and move far away from him. He is a God who brings people back. Elijah's calling was to turn the hearts of the people. 
back to God. We see this in Malachi. When Malachi prophesied a forerunner to Messiah, he said, I will send you a person who will prepare the way for before the Lord, who will turn the hearts of the people towards God. And again, we see the same thing when the angel spoke to Zechariah about his son. The angel said, he was prophesying about John the Baptist. The angel said, your son would have the power and spirit of Elijah and he would prepare the way for Messiah by turning the hearts of his people. God is in the business of turning people back to himself. Probably you're praying for a friend, you're praying for a loved one who went far away from the Lord. You have the confidence that the Lord will bring them back. Keep praying. The Lord brings back people. And when the Lord answered by fire, people fell down and worshipped God saying, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The Lord was proved to be a living God on Mount Carmel. But there was a problem. Between God and his people, there was Ahab and Jezebel. They opposed God and his plan. Elijah experienced success on Mount Carmel. But in front of them, he was so fearful. And in our next part, we'll be looking at the effect of fear on Elijah. 